Welcome to the Getting Started video for RPT Software's Donation Management Software. Okay, let's get started. At the start of the program, you are taken to the list of contacts. Contacts are your prospects and donors, and most of the system revolves around them. Let's get some basics out of the way first. To navigate around the program, you use the, the buttons on the ribbon to go to the corresponding areas. As you can see, as I click on each button, it takes me to the corresponding list. Okay, let's jump back to contacts. As you can see on the contact screen, I currently have 3,535 contacts. I can easily scroll down to look at the whole list. I can do things like search for a contact. So let's search for everyone named Steve. I can use, on contacts, I can use the, the letters over here to filter. So hey, everyone with the last name was starting with C, G, so on. Uh, I can also use, if you see on every column, there's this little arrow. So I can do things like filter based on information in any column. Filters works, work different ways for text fields, number fields, and date fields. So that was an example of a text field. Let's, let's jump over to donations. So as you can see, I have four, a little over 4,000 donations. I can easily search my donations based on date. Uh, let's look at uh, donations for last month. Hey, we had 254 donations last month. I can always hit show all records to get back to the entire list. Let's do a number field. Let's look for donations greater than $400, greater than or equal to $400. As you can see, I have 700 donations greater than that. Other things you can do, you can show hide fields. So if there's certain fields you don't want to see on the list, you can hide them or get them back. You can also resize fields to make them bigger or smaller. You can move fields around to customize your list. Uh, we also have advanced filtering. I'll just show you some advanced filtering right now. Um, please watch the, the other video. We have a complete video on advanced filtering that goes into how to make filters and things of that nature. But let's use a filter. So this is a filter context who gave over $1,000. So my list of contacts went down to 22 contacts, gave over $1,000 total. I have another filter that's just, uh, I'm working on these 10 contacts, so I just, I put those 10 contacts in a filter, so now I can easily jump to look at those 10 contacts. Another example, contacts that donated in the last 90 days. There we go. Uh, let's see, other things you can do. You can export to Excel, so any list. I could export the entire list. I could export the, the current filtered list. And with contacts, I can even select off uh, certain contacts I want, that I want to export. And there it made an Excel file. So that's the basics for list management. Okay, let's look at a contact. You can create a new contact or you can open an existing contact. Let's open Steve Smith. As you can see, here's the main contact screen for Steve Smith. You have name, company, you can have as many addresses as you want, you can have as many phone numbers as you want, you can have as many emails as you want. You can set up donor levels, you have status type category, employee, source, next step, next step date. As you can see, there's 
any drop down has this little pencil next to it, you can define the choices for that drop down. What groups this contact belongs to? On the miscellaneous tab, you have various information, employment information, salutations are useful in letters and emails. Uh, you can have a t as many attachments on this contact. You have the related activities, opportunities, donations, pledges. You have a quick summary of donations and pledges. Uh, related correspondence, notes, and relationships. Uh, and you can easily click on other contacts to jump around to contacts that this contact is related to. Okay, let's take a look at donations and pledges. As you can see, I'm on Steve Smith's contact screen. I'm going to take a look at Steve Smith's donations. And let's open one of those. So here you can see Steve donated $300 on the 20th. Let's quickly show you a uh, typical way you might correspond about this donation. The first way is you can just indicate a type of correspondence that you're doing. Uh, when you did the correspondence and, le and then you do it outside of the system. Uh, the, the other way is you would actually generate a letter from the system. Where there's a letter you can see it fills in the information about the $300 donation that Steve Smith made. You can print that out it will automatically timestamp that and record that and it rides with this donation. Uh, you could, alternatively, you could send an email. We have custom email template ability, so you can, or we'll just show you this email, this is what it's going to look like. It does the same type of thing, it merges in the data and you would just send, say OK to send the email. Here it's sending, then it's, the email has been sent. Uh, your other alternatives, you could add it to a mailing list. At this point we have one mailing list for donation acknowledgments. If you did it this way, uh, you might then wait, you know, at the end of the week we send out all our donation acknowledgments to all the people. Uh, so it's kind of, you do it at a later time. Alright, hope that made sense. Let's take a look at a pledge. Here's your typical pledge screen. It will show all the donations collected against that pledge on the graph as well as here. And you can do the same type of correspondence with a pledge as well as you can have detailed notes about how exactly the pledge is, is scheduled and going to come in. All right, I hope that made sense. Okay, let's look at an activity. There are various types of activities. You can have t activities between the contact and the employee. You could have a, a list of to-do items that the employee maintains for themselves. Or you could have activities related to campaigns and events. Hopefully this screen makes sense.